I thought we could have just a short discussion on elections and where we are with that. The um, Secretary of State met with um, the governor the other day and the, the governors, from what I understand is that the governor isn't particularly worried about fraud. I know there was some discussion of, of that and I think that uh, he feels that that isn't an issue. It hasn't happened in Vermont and it isn't likely to. And we have a very different setup than the other states because we have um, town clerks that are kind of integral to this, this system. So he wasn't worried about the fraud. And um, what he really wanted was for us to be back to normal in November so we could have a regular election. But I have, major concerns about that because even Dr. Levine said we're likely to have a resurgence in um, the October or November. So um, I, have, I have written a letter to the governor asking him to please um, make a decision and um, come to a, an agreement with the Secretary of State. Um, I think that he, he actually does not wanna be in the middle of this, but we made him by saying that it had to be in agreement with instead of just in consult, consultation with, um, which is what we originally had. So they, I, I don't know how much of this we went through before. So stop me if we've already gone through all of this, but. They're, they expect to have about 500,000 voters registered by this fall. The plan is to, in August, to send out a, um, a postcard and you return the postcard asking for an early ballot that for the primary. And they all, it's less, usually less than 25% of the people who vote in the primary. And, people don't consider the primary as important because you're not actually choosing your leader, you're just choosing your party candidate. So they're not going to do a mail out, this is their plan, not do a mail out for the primary. Then in um, sometime in, it would be the mid, mid September, they also are going to do a, a postcard mailing to everybody just and lots of lots of um, public relations. They have a whole campaign set up to do public relations about um, how it's going to change this year, and on social media, and in the newspapers, and mailings, and through the BCAs, and they have a whole plan for that. But anyway, then sometime in September, like when you have the forty-five days when it has to go out to the overseas people, they would then send a ballot to every registered voter. The um, lists and addresses should have been somewhat cleaned up because when they send out the um, one in August, there will be return address on there and say, return to the town clerk and they can clean up the, the um, lists. So, and it's a very, very complicated I didn't realize it was quite so complicated, but there are 246 different return addresses on there and 275 completely separate ballots that have to be printed and then collated into the right envelopes to be sent. And then they will be returned to the um, town clerk. The town clerks will be given the option to either um, have the Secretary of State send them all out from the state, but with the town clerk's return address on them, or the town clerks can do them themselves. And um, apparently a number of town clerks have already said it would be great if the Secretary of State sent them out. So because this is so complicated and they need to, as Carol Dawes pointed out in her letter, if they're gonna send it out in sep mid-September, a project that big and to get local vendors as much as possible, we need to sign, be signing contracts now so that they can get the um, postcard stock that they need, or the card stock is not postcard, card stock that they need to print the ballots. So we need to have a decision quickly. 
and um, I have written a letter. A number of town clerks have written letters. Um, a number of um, groups around the state have are writing letters to the um, governor, just urging him to come to a decision right now. And um, I, I don't know where we are. I Carol, I mean Sarah Copeland Hanses and I are as chairs are going to write a letter, but I don't know how the committees feel about it. So Chris Bray, you had a question? And then Allison? Um, yeah, thank you for the update. Um, I, I guess what's a little confusing to me is to hear, uh, you know, I can fully appreciate and understand the governor not wanting to make our elections political, it sounds. Uh, but one way to do that is simply, and not to be sort of somehow he's now in the middle of it because we put him there. I think we added, we changed in consultation to with, to in agreement with, um, I don't know that they origin anyway, to, to give him um, sort of room on the playing field or something like that. But if, if he really doesn't want to be there, he could, simply say, I'm going to defer to the chief elections officer and follow his recommendations and judgment because this isn't my bailiwick. So I don't, I, I don't quite understand how not wanting to participate, <laughs> be in the middle of it also means um, holding up, you know, getting to a decision. And so that's one observation slash question. And, and um, the other thing is, I would think even though we all wish we could vote in person in November, the most prudent thing to make sure that we have a sound election is to plan for the contingency that we can't. And, and then it could well come off without a hitch because we'll have gone through this careful windup uh, as opposed to being a little tight on time and maybe surprised that there's a flare up and all that kind of stuff. So that's just two thoughts. Well, the timing is we, we have to, if we don't make a decision now, we won't, we won't be able to do it. That's the bottom line. And if we do make a decision now, we're going to have to go through with it because we, we will be signing contracts with um, a mailing house and a printer. The, and polls will still be open, the, but they will be limited. They're expecting I don't know, maybe 80% of the people or more to, to mail in their ballots. So the person, when you get your ballot, you'll have the option then of mailing your ballot back, taking it to the, uh, the some of the town clerks are considering having safe drop boxes that you can put it in by the town clerk's office. Um, so you can do that. Or you could just hold on to your ballot and go to the poll and vote there because your name won't have been checked off on the early checklist. So you can go there and do it. And if you lost your ballot and you show up at the poll and your name is not checked off on the list, you can vote there. They'll have extra ballots there. And they so the polls will still be open, but very limited. And town clerks are already getting um, information from their usual core of people that work on the election saying they don't feel safe doing it. The other thing, let me throw in before I go to you, Allison, is that one of the things the governor suggested was going back to the legislature for a vote. And we, we um, voted. we've already voted and given that authority there. And clearly on the first list of options that we all accepted and voted for was a mail out um, ballot. So. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. Allison? Yeah. No, I, I think we're pretty clear. I, I think we're wise to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. I, I, I think we absolutely have to do this. And um, it, it would be great if, if we're open in November. But as a committee member, I fully support and would love to have the committee support the two chairs and have it be from the whole committee in addition and from all of us because... Uh, you know, we've learned that that is a good modus operandi is uh, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Yeah, so basically what what the letter says is just some of the details that 
about how complicated this is and that it really doesn't change. It, it still puts the decision of how to vote in the hands of the voter because the voter can mail it in just, just like now. The, the, only dif the only difference in this is that everyone would get a ballot, not just those requesting. That's the right. only change. Um, the, what you do with your ballot afterwards and is all up to the individual voter. Right, and I think a key difference is every voter, will, they're more likely to get the ballots because we will clean up the mailing list with the yeah. August work. And I think that's critically important. It's not like we're wasting money. There won't be a lot of wasted money in that. Um, it's, it's important, I think, for the administration to understand that is that that's part of the objective with the August primary uh, postcard mailing is that we will have a much better, a much cleaner, better, stronger mailing list. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, I, I feel very strongly about this. Um, oh, me too. But, um, but I, I don't know where the rest of the committee is. And I, I do know that, um, and the governor was not, he wasn't worried about fraud. He wasn't worried about partisanship in the election at all. He, he mainly just wanted to, it to be back to normal so that we could hold a regular election, which I completely understand. I think that is the ideal, but even if we're back to normal, people, poll workers are saying, I'm not gonna feel comfortable even in November coming there because they get, I mean, I don't know about, our poll and polling place in Putney doesn't get that crowded because it's a great big gymnasium and it's just a, you know, some boxes, but in Brattleboro, it is really crowded and you have to go in and, and the same thing in Bellows Falls, they're in small areas and um, would be a massive, uh, the project to change the polling place so that they could be far apart and have people standing far apart. So, uh, oh, and he wasn't, um, it, money is not the issue because there is federal money that can be used for right. this. Um, but if we, if we use the federal money and then didn't do it, then there's the possibility that we'd have to pay it back. So well, anyway. It, 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 sorry, Jeanette, it sounds like we'll use it. I mean, it, it, we'll use it and people will just have one more option. If they yeah, yeah. Much and better all, we'll use all it. The, um, all the envelopes, all the return envelopes to the town clerks will have uh, postage paid on them. Yeah. So, it, so it I mean, cost, yeah. we will have used it. Yeah. Uh, and there just may be one more option, which is more people may be willing to vote in person by November. That, yeah, more, maybe. Chris? My, if I had a guess, and it's only a guess, it's that if we do it this way, many people may like it so much that this becomes uh, uh, the new normal way of voting. Would well, I don't want to go there until we have that discussion mainly. I think this is a one, one off yeah. and we'll have to have that discussion later because we, I mean, we have to see how it goes. I'm not, I don't think, I don't want to think beyond that this election, because I think that raises more questions than we're prepared to answer around this one. Sure. I guess I'm just saying it's a bit of an experiment, right? It, yes. Yeah. But a good Betsy, one. Betsy, Anthony? Well, it's, I don't want to be redundant. I was going to ask about the money, so I'm glad to be reminded that money's not an issue because I, I had friends ask me about who's going to pay for all these mailings and whatnot. I think the bottom line is if the committee agrees, I think it would be really good for the committee to sign on to the letter. I mean, because putting off the decision is going to be a real problem. The decision will be made for us if we don't make it soon. Oh, yeah. And I, I, my, the feeling I get is the governor didn't say no, to, to, but the voice reservations, which is holding things up. And I think he needs to get on board as soon as possible so that we can get this going. Otherwise, it's going to be too late. Just for your information, the uh, change from in consultation with to agreement with did not come from the governor. He was actually, I think, a bit surprised when he heard that, that that was the language. I, I can't say that for sure, but it did not come from him. Right. Betsy, do you have anything to add? <laughs> 
<laughs> so Carol Doss, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I was, I was going to say, uh, you talked about um, the concerns about election workers. I think another thing that, that even if we're predominantly back to normal, and I don't think anybody thinks we will be, but even if we were predominantly back to normal by November, I think we also need to be really cognizant of voter fear, of mm -hmm. people being afraid of coming to, um, to large crowded areas, uh, and that that's a, a, a probably a huge barrier to participation. Mm -hmm. And so the, the more of those barriers we can, uh, we can break away, we can push away, um, the, the better we'll be serving the voters. Um, and it'll just create more peace of mind for the voters mm -hmm. that they know that they don't have to go to the polls. Thank you. Brian? Well, I've waited till uh, most of the others have spoken. Uh, I remain concerned about the situation in November. I'm curious why, since the results of the August primary won't be known until after August 11th, why we need to make a decision now to pull the trigger and mail the ballots in November. I understand about printing them, and but you can't print anything until you have the winners. So there's already a date at which you sort of have to take a pause. And I would prefer that we not make a final decision about mailing the ballots in November until after the August primary. And if we do, and I realize I'm in uh, you know, minority position here, um, I would like the Secretary of State to make it clear that it has to be the voter, him or herself, that either mails the ballot back or brings it to the polling place, that you can't have someone else collect them for you and mail them, you know, three or four at a time or, or bring them back. I That's think true. that there, there was some discussion about that when I met with the Secretary of State's office. And, um, and in fact, I believe on our joint meeting, Jim Harrison brought that up. Like, could he yeah, take he his did. wife's back? Yep. And I, I think that there has to be some flexibility here for the um, woman who is pretty feels pretty compromised and doesn't want to have to go down to the polling place to drop off her ballot. Um, there has to be some ability for people to deliver it for them. But and I and, the, and I think the secretary of state and the town clerks were talking about how how you would. Um, do that so that and that was um i mean the thing that happened in north carolina was it was um, it was it was a stupid thing to for whoever to do and i don't even know what exactly did happen i don't know that but, but i don't well, that's not going to happen here but we i don't we currently allow other people to bring them back i mean that's we true have, we you know we currently allow i i you know, I have delivered them, the people who go to the old folks homes and to the assisted living places and the nursing homes, they bring them back. I mean, we currently allow that. The postman mm -hmm. is another person who is, brings them back. I mean, it's, we currently allow that. I don't see any reason to deviate from what we already allow. That's true. We do Allison, allow when you when you go to their, to the, uh, those places, do you ever counsel people about the way that they're gonna vote? No, I, I mean, for example, I picked up my mother's and took it back in uh, March, you know, when we had town meeting. So um, she took a while to fill hers out. They, um, the, uh, the, some of the BCA go to these places uh, and help uh, facilitate the voting and they bring them back. I mean, we allow, we allow for this already. And I, there are people who bring their college kids back who, who they might be home for November, for example, uh, or, or they might be home for Christmas holidays and they could early vote for town meeting or, you know, I, I, I just think, I think we already allow for that. So how would you react if someone said, well, how should I fill this ballot out? You, you, you would say, I'm, you know, that it's up to you. I, and I think that yeah. the BCA already does that with nursing homes where people don't necessarily 
know all the candidates and they they have a very thoughtful way that they counsel them and we should hear from the bca but you know that's already happening mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of time i know that when my mother was um at an assisted living facility what they did is they brought the ballots over there and then the um the it wasn't the bca that came but the um activities director some there were a couple people there that met with people and helped them fill it out but as far as i know nobody ever i mean my mother said to me how should i vote and i said for me but um nobody nobody else worked with her told her how to vote or anything like that right. and allison is right we do that now we allow that now so um if yeah. we and they're they're just um brian they're usually the assistant clerks or and or members of the bca and or and or family members i mean i i and you you know you take it into the clerk's office they check it off i mean it's you know it's a very formal process of it, receiving it um but just like now at, at when people get them at home family members can work with older people and people who are disabled to answer their to do their ballot i mean it this happens this is the joy of being able to vote at your kitchen table so, so one what, of the, what would be the problem with waiting until after the results of the August primary are known? Everything is going to have to be printed and the, the postage is going to have to be printed on them before they, we have to sign a contract. They, uh, as, there is as, no as, way. As huh? a printer's daughter, as a, as a printer's daughter, Brian, I can answer that, which is uh, the paper, the, the paper, the stock has to all be ordered now. There's going to be probably a huge rush yeah. on this stuff. So they have to get the paper. You're absolutely right. It isn't, the final printing doesn't happen till August, but that's the easy part. It's securing the materials that is gonna be very hard for them if they wait. That, but, and so the printing will all happen, except for maybe the return envelopes and the, the, and the pieces that aren't gonna be affected by the primary. But right. absolutely the stock is the big key issue here. It is, and the, the envelopes will be, can be printed. Yeah, they don't yeah, have to wait. They don't have to wait. And you're talking about um, if there are 500,000 voters, I think that's what he said. A lot. You're talking about um, 1 million envelopes because there's the outside envelope that they're going to send to them. Right. No, you're talking about 1.5 million because you're talking about the outside envelope that's going to go with the ballot. And then there's an inside envelope that you put in you put your ballot in and then you put that in another envelope. So they're like a million and a half envelopes. I mean, I, I, it sounds horrendous to me and I just, I can't believe that I just said that and I hope I'm not making it up, but no, you're, there are three right. different envelopes with every, every ballot. So That's they're right. gonna have to be printed and with the postage on there, and the return postage printed on there. And so what they have to do is they're gonna to have to go get, work with the post office to get the permit, the, the mailing permit postage thing so that they can print that on there. And then it's gonna have, then they're gonna to have to figure it out with the town clerks when it comes back, how all those permits. So it is, it, has to be printed. You're, you're talking about a project. If anybody's done any kind of a fundraiser, with right. a, a mailing list of 500,000 people, you know that it's gonna take you months and months to do that. And that's, that's essentially what we're talking about here, except that it's not a fundraiser. Right, right. It, it, it's, a, it's a big, and also quite honestly, I think all of us want this to be our local printing houses. If you're it gonna is. have local printing houses, it's gonna have to be done in stages so because it will overwhelm them otherwise. Betsy Ann? I'm sorry, ma'am. I have right? to go to another meeting. Oh. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tucker said I'll keep track of stuff for me. Thank you, Tucker. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Anthony, did you have a comment? I was saying goodbye to Betsy. Oh, okay. Well, I but I but, but but I I I mean I at first when Brian mentioned the idea of why not wait till after the primary. 
I can see why on some level that makes sense. But then when you think about the need to order the card stock, the stock, you have the paper all set up. It doesn't, you know, you just can't do that. You got to get that stuff ready now. So it's a legitimate question, but I think that when it comes to ordering so many pieces of paper and getting such a large project organized, I don't think we can wait. I think we should have, we should have done this last week or the week before, quite honestly. Well, they were, they were hoping to. And they're they're now a week a little behind themselves, and I, I'm I'm hoping they'll be able to come to a decision by the end of this week. I guess I'm still not clear. If they print a million and a half ballots, on no, this special no, no, stuff. not a million and a half ballots. It'll be five hundred thousand ballots, and then with a, some kind of an overrun. If they have five hundred thousand um, vote registered voters. They'll print the 500,000 plus maybe 100,000 extras for people who lose them or show up at the polls or whatever. It's the envelopes themselves that have to be printed and have that little indicia on them in the corner that uh, from the permit from the post office. Right. And that, that, those have to, they couldn't possibly print that million and a half between August um, 11th and September 15th. They just can't do it. I find that hard to believe, but. Well, it isn't just, but it isn't just the, the printing, remember the, so you have 275 different ballots. So the organizational skills of the printer and the mailing house here are gonna be crucial because you have 275 different ballots wow. because the towns have different ballots and the counties have different ballots. And then you have 246 different return addresses because they're going back to the town clerks. They're not going back to the, to the Secretary of State's office, which is the way it should be. They should go back to the town clerk's office because I think people will be more, feel more confident in the election if it, they know that it's going to their own town clerk instead of some state entity out there. So you have those 246 return addresses and which of the 275 ballots goes in each of those. It, it's a massive project. Yeah. It's, it's um, I would not want to undertake this. But we're glad that we, we're glad that, <laughs> that the Secretary of State's office feels that they see a path forward and can manage it well we're glad that they there are some local vendors who who yeah. have the ability to do that but if if we wait they will not be able to get the card stock or the envelope stock and they will not be able to print it for us because um there's a lot going on so that's anyway i'm happy to write the letter um with just sarah if um committee members want to write as a committee member um, to the governor and just say, um, I think the two things to say are that we need to make a decision quickly. And and he if he doesn't want to make a decision, he can just say, I'm going to trust the Secretary of State to make the decisions and do it. And it should not have to come back to the legislature because that will hold it up a long time. There won't be um, no, we voted. We voted. Unanimously, I believe. Yes. And I do agree with that, Madam Chair. I, I don't have an issue with, uh, I don't remember what act number it is, but back in the middle of March, perhaps, or maybe it was early yeah. April, and we did. There were six provisions, as I recall, right. that we gave the Secretary of State the authority to consider as possible procedures. And I was I was fine with that. Um, and the governor, uh, I guess, can do whatever he chooses to do. And um, I feel badly I can't join you all um, unanimously, but I still, I, I did get a bunch of emails over the uh, weekend from constituents that have concerns. So I have to uh, feel like I'm representing them too. Are there, are there concerns about fraud? Well, I don't know that anyone used that. I think that's a strong term. Um, I, I just think sometimes that they're looking for safeguards um, to prevent any sort of misadventure. Um, I would phrase it that way. And, um, you know, I realize that it's probably gonna happen the way 
the uh, Secretary of State is planning on it, and that's fine. But I just wanted to at least um, express my uh, feelings. Well, Brian, um, I think in res your your constituents have such a good, uh, our track record in Vermont is so good on mail, voting by mail. I mean, we've had almost no, I mean, we had no fraud as far as our testimony has gone. And we've been doing this for years. So um, if ever there was a state that could, uh, it, in confidence, move forward on this option, I think we're in a position to, to do that given our track record. I agree, but we are expanding the, uh... The universe of people getting the uh, the, the mail-in ballots. I mean, they don't have to request them; they're just going to get them. So I do right. think it, it's a little different. I'll be honest; I'm still planning on going to the poll to vote. I think that's the best way that we have to vote, and uh, I'm glad that there will. That hopefully, I guess I haven't heard for real or for certain that there will be polls open, but I'm hoping they will. And I have all the confidence in the world that the clerks will figure a way to put people through the polling places in a safe manner. And I have no, uh, no doubt that's how I'll vote. You know, that I, I think that, that whether the polls are open and how they're open and the procedure that they use is going to be up to the individual town clerks to decide whether they wanna have a regular polling place where people come in and stand and do the checkoff or if they wanna have drive-by voting um, where you, one car pulls up and you get your ballot and you s the other cars sit there and wait until just like you're doing at the bank now you can't you can't go into the banks you have right. to do everything by drive up so you have to sit in line and wait if the person has a, a an issue in front of you that's going to take 20 minutes you're just going to wait 20 minutes and so there might be some town clerks where the um the voting workers the poll workers are nervous enough that they don't want to have contact at all with anybody and yes. um they I do think that way be... <laughs> so they they might do it any or they might have um safe deposit drop boxes that people can but the polls will be open in some manner and people who choose to go there to vote i love going to the polls my guess is that candidates won't be standing at the polls this yeah, year. Yeah, I wondered that too. You know, are you going to stand out with your sign? And uh, I don't know. I I have always hated doing that anyway. Half the half the um, people there are only a couple towns in my district that expect you to do that, and half the people in those towns hate it, and half the people <laughs> love it. So I I. Um, I like seeing the people and standing there and stuff, but I don't, I think it's, no, I, I think, think that if we're going to have this election, we're, uh, you, yeah, if you want to stand all six feet apart and have a mask on and stand, depending on the situation, I don't know. That's something that they'll have we will to figure see. out. We have, we have many months to get there. Very <laughs> true. Yeah. Those kinds of issues I think will be dealt with. Um, I appreciate the committee's forward. understanding my position. Thank you. Yep. We do. Thank you. All so, right. So, come in, Jeanette, if if yes. um, it, it could it be that that some of us, uh, the committee members who'd like to, could just join you and uh, and Sarah, or you and Sarah. I think it's stronger if you and Sarah, as chairs of the committee, send a letter, and that um, uh, maybe the Chris and Anthony and I write our individual letters. Should we just send them to Kendall? I assume Kendall or Jay Johnson. They're the two contacts. I think Jay is the one that's mainly dealing with this issue, but either one work. Okay. 